Oh gosh. It's so funny. All right, we'll get back to the video. She's just, she's just a female fresh and fit. She's a, she's a, a white woman fresh and fit. But because she's a white woman, that is novel in this space. She's a pick me, but she's a pick me, but she doesn't actually want to get picked. That's what makes it so funny, right? It's not really like her thing. Um, but she knows those talking points work. And the reason why I'm even talking about this is because there's never been, like if you watch my Manosphere video, especially the Black Manosphere one, because the first two, I didn't dive into the actual community as a lot. I just talked about the atmosphere, right? But in the Black Manosphere one, I called out the fact that a lot of these dudes try to act like what they really care about is Black men and boys, or what they really care about is the Black family. And that there's a deeper meaning to what they're doing. But at every opportunity, uh, uh, apart from, I'm sure, a few exceptions, what you tend to see is they will champion and hold up anyone that talks shit about women, especially black women. Now, I haven't watched her enough to see if she does a lot of uh, slander around black women. I feel like she can't do too much because I, I feel like there'd have been more, more people who would have got her if she did that. At least within this space, the, the Manosphere, Black Manosphere space, I wouldn't say most pick me's are grifters because in my observation, I think they genuinely believe what they're saying. Many of them are married and that's just, like it's a grift to an extent, but at least there's a belief system behind the grift. But here's what happened though. So she had been, when Andrew Tate went to jail, and kind of fell off a little bit. I mean, I'm assuming he has, I ain't been paying attention. She kind of rose up the ranks to be like the next big voice. You know, everybody like Fresh and Fit kind of like hit a plateau. Andrew Tate hit his plateau and it's starting to die down. So she rose up behind them. It was kind of like just business as usual. I would have never talked about her like directly, but then she did something really interesting a couple of weeks ago, or maybe a little over a month ago. She decided to bring on Nick Fuentes to her <laughs> show. I love the way FD signifier pronounces Fuentes. Fuentes. <laughs> also, Char Charnel Mansion, thank you so much for the nine months. So thank you for the 15 months. Thank you. And for those who don't know, Nick Fuentes is an overt white supremacist who was uh, bigger in like in the in the pre-Unite the Right rally world of YouTube, Nick Fuentes was a YouTuber, was an anti-SJW type guy. So Fuentes had his major reign and they got deplatformed because he's an overt white supremacist neo-Nazi, like he is. This, this is not a conversation or an argument. Um, but Fuentes never stopped making content. He was, he was dying on the vine on Rumble and whatever other alternative spaces existed. Um, and you know was not of any real consequence until i hate to bring him up again because i ain't talked about this motherfucker in months but i gotta talk about this from my perspective it wasn't until fucking destiny brought him back into the fold of the public discourse that the wind nightmare blunt rotation says managed to reemerge as something significant which is why we don't do shit like that because nobody was thinking or talking about Nick Fuentes until he started popping up on Destiny and eating cookies with his wife or whatever the fuck that nonsense was. Wouldn't be a good wife. Oh. So I got peanut butter sandwiches. Whoa! But this whole time. The only thing that could have made that clip worse is if it was like heated up chicken nuggies. Dino nuggies! Oh yeah, yeah, my, 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 my favorite dino nuggies. <sighs> you mean better. Better and worse. Okay, somehow both at the same time. Okay, so cute. Fuentes has not stopped being an overt white supremacist, has not stopped talking about being anti-race missing, has not stopped being anti-Semitic the whole time. 
Next thing you know, Fuentes is talking, is, is Kanye West fucking- There's nothing wrong with making nuggies yourself. There's something uh, cringe-pilled about having nuggies delivered to you. You know? Especially when you're a whole-ass adult. FD's editor are pretty funny, yeah. Um, so if you think, if you remember what the Kanye West nonsense was a couple of months ago, when he was running around various uh, right-wing uh, talk shows, that was Nick Fuentes with him. Nick Fuentes, on top of being a white supremacist, also is obsessed with Kanye West. He's a explicitly weird dude. But if you are a grifter type, if you have no scruples or sense of responsibility about your platform, Nick Fuentes makes for good TV. He makes for good content. So of course, if you want to have good content and you don't care about the consequences of spreading anti-Semitism and white supremacy, like a destiny, then you're gonna bring him on. And so after destiny, he pops up on No Jumper, he pops up on all kinds of shit. And of I course- I mean, he, he was pops up he pops up with like Kanye West on Alex Jones's show. Like it's not good. Running around with uh with Kanye West. Thankfully, even in the black manosphere, there's a level of integrity. Well, in half the black manosphere. And so these motherfuckers never popped up in the, this motherfucker never popped up in the black manosphere. But when he popped up on just Pearly Things, this uh, podcast or whatever the hell she does, it caused a problem. Because just Pearly Things, because she knows her griff well, she hosts the show where her, on whatever level to Destiny at least when Fuentes was on De in Destiny's presence, Destiny was calling him a white supremacist and pointing out his bullshit. It's still exploitative and irresponsible, but it's one notch above overt dereliction of, of duty. And when uh, Fuentes is on her thing, she's just like, wow, that that's interesting. He's just saying racist shit. And she's not pushing back on anything. It's the same dumbass smile. Did you think that makes me a white supremacist to say that? No, that kind of makes sense. Like what you're saying. Um, personally, I'm trying to get I'm trying to get my Africans in America. So we're not gonna, <laughs> yeah. we're not gonna support that. <laughs> like it, like it, please make it easy for me to immigrate next year. <laughs> well, I will say, hey, there are more industrious get than American in. blacks. Get blessing in. Um, this sounds similar to the slavery stuff too, because that's that's literally they they the founder of or the guy who made Root said I wanted a myth for my people to live by so they often but that's what they do is they embellish and i'm not trying to say it wasn't horrible it was right but they want to make it like more horrible so that they can control people the whole time and so the black manosphere to 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 make me proud to an extent some of these dudes is like yo fuck this shit we don't fuck with just probably things no more um and mind you, I want to be clear, because I've actually, when this started happening. I'm sorry. I like that the black manosphere uh, men are like, listen, we can excuse the sexism, but we draw the line at racism. I was listening to you when you were talking about how women don't belong in the workforce. But then you were racist. I liked it when you were just talking poorly about your people. Why are you talking poorly about my people? It's like, huh? What? Huh? <laughs> Bruh. Meerkat. Meerkat. Meerkat, look. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. I love him. I actually went in and had a couple of conversations with some black manuscript. Ah, oh, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Um, so, right. So, so let me not give the niggas, the manuscript niggas too much credit. They would have been okay with her nonsense because they know she's a fraud. They know these dudes from the UK are just getting their money. They don't care. They want their misogynistic entertainment. They want somebody to talk bad about women. So they just kept, kept it pushing. But thankfully, a handful of them have the wherewithal to be like, y'all can't, we, we, we not just gonna sit here and watch a white woman talk with a Nazi bad about us and be cool with it. Um, but as I was saying before, uh, uh, the camera went off, 
I actually went on a couple of Manosphere, you know, chats or whatever, live streams to hear directly from them. And like, it's clearly a division, right? There's some, some men who just like, they've never paid attention to her at all. There's some who were truly, I guess, hurt by what she's doing. And there are some that still have her back. There are some that still are riding for just pearly things, uh, even as we speak. And I don't know enough to know what to call it, to know to know what to make of it. There's some that don't, that I think the literal thing I heard from one of the brothers. And I mean, this is basically exactly what FD Signifier is saying. I don't think they would have cared much if Nick Fuentes only shit talked to black women. Yes. I mean, if you are like one of the people in the uh, manosphere, the black manosphere space, and your entire thing is like very um, Kevin Samuels, like I'm just going to shit on black women over and over again. And then you get this guy on and he's doing the same thing. Yeah, it's fine. Because that's already what they like doing, right? You know? And I mean, that's literally exactly what he's saying. Be best freeze frame. I'm so sorry. I did him so dirty. <laughs> I did him so dirty. Uh, also, uh, Jacoop Hall, thank you so much for the prime for three months. Thank you. And I might be being unfair, but it's the black man is fierce. So I really don't care that much if I'm unfair. But basically what I feel like I heard is as long as the message is getting out there, I'm not super worried about the messenger, which is fucking gross. <laughs> Is, is fucking gross because basically what they're saying is as long as somebody hates women, especially black women like I do, and they can share that sentiment to a wide audience, if they also happen to share neo-Nazi talking points, you know, you got to break eggs to make an omelet. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure whenever this pops out, you know, for all I know, knowing some of these black men is for niggas, they, they, they're they streaming me streaming right now. Because y'all know they do that. Uh, <laughs> um, You know, part of it is just a lot of these dudes are clout demons. They just want to be seen and heard um, as much as possible. Part of this is some of these dudes are just truly broken and truly like taken in by this misogynistic worldview. Um, you know, this is it very much behaves like a cult in a lot of ways. I mean, part of this is just sad. Whenever I talk about the yeah. manosphere and I take issue with the black manosphere in particular, most, most people know this shit isn't serious. These niggas not serious, right? But there's always that small contingent. There's always that small fraction of dudes. I don't know what to call them small fraction. There's always that specific faction of manosphere dudes that want to act like they really care about black people, about black men and boys. They want, they, they, they just, they want to hide all the shit. Like all the, all the bad, all the bad takes, all the illogical misreading of research and data, um, all the talking points that don't make sense under scrutiny, um, and all the overt misogyny and homophobia that they just let slide, you know, because we shouldn't control, we don't want to be tone policed. You know what I'm saying? All of that stuff they give a pass to because they say what it's really about is black men and boys. And we're the only space where black men have a voice, which is fucking stupid and doesn't make any <laughs> sense because there's a million spaces where black men have voices. Yes. We just had a whole, a whole three, three niggas from the Midwest spreading their voices on this channel just now about a real issue that affects black people and black men and managed, managed, it was, it was all, we, we didn't get any misogyny in the conversation. It was a missed opportunity, according to them niggas. They keep, they keep that. It's and like, for a select- Okay, stick with me for just two seconds. Tell me if this doesn't make any sense, Chad, please let me know. It feels a lot like the turf type behavior to be like, we don't have any, listen, this is the only spaces we have that are for women and you're trying to allow men into them. And it's like, This isn't about women. This isn't about helping women. This isn't about protecting women. You just want to be transphobic. Just admit that you're transphobic. I have... Chat. How is it that I have met many, many trans women and not a single trans woman has ever made me feel uncomfortable? 
I have met lots of gender non-conforming people and none of them have ever touched me inappropriately. None of them have like sexually harassed or assaulted me. None of them have ever made me be un uncomfortable. You know what? You know what I can say? Sadly, I can't say that. That's true for men. Sadly, there have been many such cases of men making me feel uncomfortable, men touching me without consent, men, strange, strangers, complete strangers, touching me, following me, like, and you know what? Guess what? Uh, that's never happened to me with a single trans person, ever. This isn't about protecting women. This isn't about making sure that women have a safe space. This isn't about helping women. It's not about that at all, okay? Because that is not a non-existent problem. Like, it's just, it's so frustrating to me. I hate TERFs. I hate TERFs so much. I hate TERFs so much. TERFs just don't see trans women as women, though, and I think that's the whole point behind their logic. Well, of course, right? Don't TERFs realize they have an entire island off the coast of France? <laughs> yeah. It's just so frustrating. It's so frustrating. I, just, I, don't, I don't know amount for the for those for those brothers that are susceptible to that okie doke to that lie they that they, they, they keep running that play but like never has there been a more explicit example of how uh fallacious and hollow that sentiment is in that a chunk of these dudes most of these dudes i'd argue most of these dudes i'd argue can't bring themselves to talk bad about Auntie Pearl. That was a good video. That was definitely a good video. Definitely a different vibe from his normal videos, but it was a pretty good video. Yeah, that was good. That was a good video. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, I have something much worse that I want to watch. Much worse. I wanted to watch this video. I didn't get to see it 